Hey guys, CB Super. I created a new tool. It's called the CB Dash tool. What it does is it creates dashed lines either on a shape polygon or a polyline. It's absolutely free. If you'd like a copy of it, just head on over to cbsuper.com. Come down to the free tools for motion design and click on this icon right here just above where it says dashed. That's going to automatically download to your computer. It's going to be a zip file. You can unzip that file. It'll be a dot setting file and just place that dot setting file inside of your macro folder. If you're not sure where your macro folder is located, I'm going to show you a couple tricks on how to quickly find your macro folder. Also look in the description of this video. I put a blurb in there of just where the path map used to be located and hopefully is still located for your macro folder. You may notice that there is a donate button on here now. That is not required in order to pick up any of these free tools. The tools are absolutely free. And if you do decide to donate, I do appreciate it. Thank you very much for everybody who has already donated. Let's go ahead and jump over to DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you how to quickly find your macro folder. One little note is that I am using DaVinci Resolve 16.2. If you're watching this from the future, awesome, that's pretty cool. You probably have a newer version of DaVinci Resolve. If you're working on a version that is older than 16.2, you will lose a little bit of functionality inside of the node itself. That being said, let's just go ahead and jump into Resolve where I will go to the media pool. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna create a new Fusion composition. I'm gonna drop this new Fusion composition into Fusion and jump right over to Fusion. Now this step isn't really necessary to find your macro folder. It's just once we find your macro folder, I'm not gonna jump back and forth. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first way to find your macro folder. As of 16.2, they've added this really neat function where you can come into the effects library, twirl down on tools, and come down to your macro section. Now you'll notice all of your user macros are now located in this macro folder. If you come up here, you can left click show folder and that should show you where your folder is if it's located in the default area. Mine isn't, so that's why mine doesn't work. Another way to find it that does work is come up to the Fusion tab up here on the top, come up to Fusion settings. You're gonna come just below general into path map and scroll down until you see macros. There's macros right there. I can go ahead and make this longer so I can see my entire user path. Now this is the path map to my macros folder. Now you can just follow that or you can just click on this browse function to actually load it up in there. The nice thing about this is you can actually click on this right here and then you can just kind of move it over grab your dot settings file and you can drop it right from your desktop. So that's just a really easy way if for whatever reason yours isn't located in the same location anymore or you're not able to find it using the information that I provided in the description. Okay, so now that we've located our macros folder, once you've added your macro folder in here, you might not see it here automatically there's a good chance you're probably gonna have to restart DaVinci in order to actually see it. Because I created the macro, obviously it's already loaded up into my macro folder. I'm just going to click on the CB dashed. All right, so here is the node. You'll notice it has an input and an output. The input is the mask input. The output is simply an output. You can go ahead and plug that right into your media out if you want. I'm gonna go ahead and load it into the viewer and you'll notice that a default rectangle that already has the dash lines applied to it is in the center of the screen. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna bring in a black background just so we have something to see the dash lines on. Now, if I take this output and drop it right onto the output of the background node, it creates a merge automatically. I'm just gonna load that merge up into the screen and connect the merge output to the media output. This part isn't really necessary for the demonstration, but it is necessary to plug in the CB dash into the media out if you'd like to see it from the edit tab, which now if we come over the edit tab, we'll notice that it is functioning correctly. So that's good. If I was to disconnect it, obviously, and I come back over here, you now see nothing. So. That's just a little tip. If for whatever reason it's not working for you, it's because it actually needs to be merged into something because it essentially is being used as like a generator more so than it is a map. It does work as a mask. You see that it does have an alpha, so you can also use it as a mask. It's just by default, it's not really set up for that. But feel free to play around with it and use it however you guys like once you guys have it installed onto your version of DaVinci Resolve. Let's go ahead and look in the inspector and we'll see what some of these tools over here on the right side do. So we notice first that it starts off as a rectangle shape. But if I want it to turn into a line, all I gotta do is take the shape line slider and slide it all the way to the right. And now it is a line instead of a shape. Now these are two different tools. 
that are, operate independently of each other. They share all of the tools with the exception of they animate and they build their own keyframes separately. If you want to edit the line, you're actually going to have to click off the shape control view and click on the show line controls. And now you can animate and edit this line like so. I'm gonna go ahead and command C that because I'm actually not at the zero frame. So if I was to animate something right now, you'll notice that it automatically lays down a keyframe. So if I go back to frame zero, you'll see that it goes all the way back to a straight line. So that is the one downfall to this tool is that from the moment that it is created, it is already keyed for animation. So you can't really stop it from animating. Now you can put in hold keyframes and I'll show you how to do that. So if I was to come up here to where the keyframe actually is located, I come over here to, since it's on the line, I don't wanna do it on the shape controls because I'm working in the line right now. So I right click here and I can remove that key and that's gonna go ahead and reset it back. Now, if I was to have several of keys here, Maybe I've been working for quite some time and you'll notice that each one of these is set at a different time and they animate on their own, but I have three separate keyframes here. In order to get rid of those, yes, I could come to each point in time where there is a keyframe. I could come up here and I could right click and I could remove those keys. Whatever you do, don't remove the polyline because if you do that, you're going to remove the mask from the paint node. And so that is going to separate the two and it'll essentially break it. And you'll have to bring in a whole new CV dash node. Because this tool is kind of complex under the hood, unfortunately I had to do it this way. So we have three keyframes. An easy way to get rid of those keyframes is to come into the spline editor. And now we can just click on the CB dash tool because this is Polygon 3. So if you're dealing with the shape, it's all Polygon 2. I should probably go in there and rename it, but I didn't. So Polygon 3 is the line. So you can come into Polygon 3. You can actually click off of Polygon 2. You won't even need to see it and click off the control poly. And you don't necessarily need to see anything else. And all you need is this Polygon 3. So once Polygon 3 setting, you notice that there are three keyframes, in fact. I can go ahead and fit this to view. If for whatever reason I want to get rid of that last keyframe, I could. I'm not going to. I'm just going to get rid of these three keyframes. I'm going to select all three of them and hit backspace, and that's going to delete them. So what I've done is I've essentially just gotten rid of all those keyframes, with the exception of the first keyframe, because there is still a first keyframe on frame zero. And that's indicated by you know this little locked point right here. If I wanted to add a keyframe as a sort of a hold keyframe, maybe I don't want this to animate until frame 50, well then I can come in here and I could right click and I can set a key. And now let's say I was to set a, at say 56, I wanted to go ahead and add a point and set this up here. You'll notice that it will only go back to frame 50. So that's how you can kind of control the animation. And that's just one of the give and take things that I had to do in order to create this really nice looking line. If you guys are interested in see how I created this tool and how you can create dash lines, I'll have another video that I'll probably release a week after this one, just showing how I created this tool, but also showing how you can create your own tool using a lot less nodes. And yes, it may only have the functionality that you plug into it, but it definitely will work and it's really easy to do. And it only requires a couple of really easy nodes. So I'm gonna go ahead and select both of these, hit backspace just to clear out all of that animation. And I'm gonna get rid of the spline tool because I'm kind of done animating for right now. With this selected, I'm actually gonna go back to the shape because I wanna talk a little bit about the actual shape itself. Now I'm gonna get rid of the show line and I'm gonna do the shape view controls. And let's go ahead and move this to kind of a corner and a point. So the nice thing about this is if I was to click off, I don't know how well you can see that, but look at that. That dash is going around the corners, which if you've ever tried playing around with the paint version of this, you'll get a square or a circle. Now, guess what? You're still getting squares and circles. We haven't recreated anything that doesn't already exist in Fusion. All we've done is we've added a mask line that follows that paint node wherever it goes. So if I was to increase this line width, you'll notice that, oh, Imagine that, they're actually the circles from the paint node. Likewise, if I take this circle square slider and move it all the way over to the square section, you'll notice that it's actually squares. But if you drop the line width down, now you'll see that, oh, okay, well that makes a really nice looking dash. That's pretty cool. And it goes around the corners, which is really nice. You wouldn't have been able to do this any other way without creating at least two masks, which I'll show you how to do that in another video if you guys are interested. So the dash size is exactly what you're thinking about. 
If you want the dashes to be smaller, you can make them smaller. If you want them to be larger, individually the dash sizes will become much larger. Likewise, the spacing controls the space in between the dashes. If you drop it all the way down to zero, you'll notice that it essentially creates a line. If you increase the line width, and then you take this last slider called outline. Well, if you boost up the outline, you'll notice, oh, okay, well, that's interesting. I have this line. Well, now I have position and length. If I decrease the length, look at that. You have a cap on the length. And so if you animate the position, you can actually animate this piece of line and it's already capped. Drop the length even further and now you can make a motion path for your own little animation. And I've shown this probably a million times where you can also double click in here, hit the equal sign, hit enter. It's gonna drop down a little expression window and I'm not gonna bore you with tons of expressions. I'm just gonna type in my favorite expression, which is time asterisk point zero five, and I'm gonna click off. And now you'll see when I press the space bar, it animates on its own slowly because you know I'm screen capturing but it does animate and it will continue to go around and round and round until it crashes my computer five seconds later so that's a way that you can increase your animation to just go around whatever polyline that you create so you kind of have to create the polyline using the box that I've created and that is one of the other downfalls, you can't come in here and already create a polyline on your own. You actually have to use the polyline that I created. And the reason for that is because there's just a lot of things that are going behind the hood in order to make the dash line function the way that we want it to. I'm gonna go ahead and in this position, I'm just going to remove the expression because I don't want it to crash my computer. So that being said, let's go ahead and we're gonna increase the dash spacing. I still have the length, so I'm gonna go ahead and put these back to the defaults. And now you can see that you get these really cool looking outlines. No matter what the width is set to, you're always gonna get that outline. So even if I bring the width down a lot, you'll notice that, oh wow, look at that. You still get these outlines. Even if I increase the dash spacing, let's say I make the dash size smaller, you still get an outline. Let's say I bring it from square back to circle and then I increase the line width, now you get hollowed out circles with outline. Uh, you can increase the spacing and essentially what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be playing with the dash size and the dash spacing quite a bit. That's just to change the look of the dashes relation to the actual polygon. And then if you want to go back to dashes, you just decrease the line width. So that's pretty much it. Uh, obviously you have the option to add color to it. I figured a lot of people would be using this standalone and the nice thing about adding some color in is that that you don't have to use another node to generate it because the node's already built in. You can also leave it in white and then you could come in here and you could add something like a CB Alpha Glow if you wanted to. And you could add some really neat glows to that. Um, and then of course you have all the control here with the, you know, the glows and the outer glows if you want. Uh, you can change that up however you like. So, I mean, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Uh, there's lots of different ways you can use this. Just keep in mind that when it is in this polygon mode, all the normal polygon things are still gonna apply. If I was to click all of these and I come up to the shape box, I can increase the size of the node overall and it, it will scale it uniformly somewhat. I'm sure you guys are already aware if, uh, if I select all those, I can scale it. If I hold down the X button, I can scale it in the X. Likewise, if I hold down the Y key, I can scale it in the Y just by going up and down. Those things still work just fine. You can also click on just a couple of points and you can scale those as well. So if I wanted to bring these in, I could. All you have to do is hold down that left mouse button and you can just start to scale it. If I wanted to move it around, all I gotta do is click on all of them and I can move it around. I can also shift B will bring back that bounding box and I can start to play, really play around with it. Uh, now, one thing to note is that if you don't have all of the nodes selected, then it's going to kind of scale it in a real weird way. But once you have all the nodes selected, Shift B will just you know scale them however you want, fairly uniformly, and then Shift B just to get out of that mode. So this pretty much works just like a regular polygon. Uh, the only difference is you can't publish it. You'll notice that if I come over here, uh, I can't really publish it and that's because I've already added some animations and it's already uh, receiving some kind of connections. But you don't necessarily have to because it's already somewhat published. So if say I was to come in here and create a ellipse, I'm gonna go ahead and size this down a lot and just kind of move it over. Now, if I wanted to animate this and use this as a motion path, I can still do it. I just have to know which polyline to actually use. So if, I, if I'm on the shape animation, it's gonna be polygon two. 
So if I come over to the center and I can click on path, jump over to modifiers, click off that displacement because you don't want that there. Come to connect to, go to polygon to polyline. Let's actually load this up so we can see that it's actually working. You notice it's already over there. Now all I have to do is I can move this displacement around and it will go along that path. Now, if you want to merge these two together, you're gonna to have to merge it into that pipeline, not as a mask actually. And because it's a mask, it will always try to mask in there, which isn't necessarily what we want. So on the merge, create another merge, right click, hold that down and drop that in as a foreground. And then look at this one and now you'll notice that we have this really neat little animation using these dotted lines so i think a lot of people will get some use out of that all you have to do is you know animate that displacement of course you can again add that little expression in here and it will continuously move along this line so that's pretty cool and it's moving along the dotted line which is really nice so if i was to come over here you'll see that they both show up in the edit tab all right well that's pretty much it for me if you guys like this video make sure to like and subscribe hit that bell notification and i will see you guys in the next one thanks